Here are eight different type tool tricks inside of Photoshop that are gonna make working with text so much easier. The first trick that we're gonna talk about is warping, because if we select our type layer, press Command or Control T to activate free transform, right click and go to warp, we are very limited with all of our warping adjustments because we don't have that typical warping grid. Instead, we're limited to whatever warp presets we have in the options bar here. And although this can work for some situations, it may not give you all of the freedom that you're looking for. So instead, what we can do is convert our type layer into a smart object. So that way we can warp our text with the typical warping mesh that you might be used to. So right clicking on that type layer and going to convert to smart object. Now I can do the same thing as before, pressing command or control T right clicking and going to warp. But now we have our warping grid available where we can have way more control and customization over our warping adjustments in ways that are not possible without converting your text into a smart object. So the next time you need that freedom with your warping, make sure to convert to a smart object. Trick number two is going to be useful if you want to distort a single letter. So for example, if I wanted to go and extend the bottom of this P, for example, I can't easily do that. But by converting our text layer into a shape, we can directly edit its path and have a lot of freedom of how individual characters look. For example, I'll right click on this type layer and go down to convert to shape. We will no longer be able to edit the words in our text, but we can now edit the styling with a lot more control. Going over to the direct path selection tool, we can now go and click on any anchor point that we want to edit. So since I want to edit these bottom two anchor points, I'll click and drag out over the bottom of the P. Those are now selected and holding the shift key, I can extend that in a straight line like so. The same thing would apply with any other characters. You can just click and drag over those anchor points and adjust things as you would like. So this is a super easy way to take complete control over the look of individual characters within your words. Now trick number three comes into play when you need to center your text within a shape layer. Rather than eyeballing it, we can create a selection of our shape and perfectly align our text to that selection. To create a selection of our shape, we'll hold command or control and click on the thumbnail of that shape layer. This will turn all the visible pixels on that shape layer into an active selection. And from here, we can click on our type layer and activate our move tool by pressing V. In the options bar, I'll click on the three dots and make sure my align to setting is selection. Now when I go and click the align horizontal and align vertical buttons, it's going to align my text layer, which is selected in the layers panel, to the active selection, which is the shape. Pressing command or control D to deselect that. Now the two layers are perfectly aligned, but to make sure that they never go out of alignment, we can link them by holding command or control and clicking on both of the layers in the layers panel to select them, and then clicking on the link icon so that now both of these layers are linked in position and size. So for example, if I grab the move tool and click on either of the layers, I can now scale them both together and they will always move as one wherever I place them. Now trick number four will take your text and punch it through any underlying shape that it is placed on top of. This will also work if you want to punch your text through an image as well. But to begin, we want to make sure our text layer is directly above the layer that we want to punch through. And then we'll double click on the type layer to access the layer styles panel. Within the blending options, we want to set the knockout setting to shallow, and then I'll bring the fill opacity slider to 0%. I'll click OK. Now, in this case, the text has gone through all of the layers in the project and not just the shape layer. So to fix this, we just need to hold command or control, select both of the layers, in this case, the type and shape layer, and I'll press command or control G to group them. Now the text will only punch through the layer that it is grouped with, and therefore we have a text layer that is making the underlying shape layer invisible, and we could place it anywhere to show the bottommost underlying layer in our project through all of those other layers. Now trick number five is super handy when you need to create a large body of text and perfectly format it somewhere within your design. And by default in Photoshop, you create something called point text, which means that it's going to create a piece of text in an infinite line as far as you can see. So this isn't super useful because eventually it goes out of your project canvas like you see here. 
So to perfectly format this, instead of just pressing enter a bunch of times, we can convert our text into paragraph text. To do that, we can click on our type layer, right click, and go to convert to paragraph text. Now when we activate our type tool by pressing T and click on our text layer, you'll notice we have this new box around it. If I zoom out to see all of the text on that line, I can just adjust this box by clicking on those anchor points and refining the size like so. Now, wherever I go and position this box, the text is automatically going to scale to fit within that area. So that way it's easy to perfectly position a larger piece of text anywhere within your design without having to press enter a bunch of times. Now, trick number six revolves around anti-aliasing, because if you're ever working with text in Photoshop and you notice that some of the edges look a little bit jagged, such as around the edge of this text here, you can see how this is super blocky and doesn't look very nice. You just need to go and change your anti-alias setting. While your type layer is active and your type tool is selected by pressing T, we just need to change the anti-alias setting in the options bar to sharp. This will automatically smooth all of those jagged edges and your text is automatically going to look a lot more clean in your projects. Now, trick number seven is super simple, but it will definitely save you some time if you didn't already know about it, because if you need to create vertical text, you don't need to press enter for every single character that you type. Instead, you can quickly convert your horizontal text to vertical and vice versa by simply clicking on your type layer, activating your type tool, clicking on your text layer, and then up in the options bar, we have this little setting here. Clicking this will automatically change your text from horizontal to vertical or back again, depending on what you're into. That way you can quickly format a bunch of text into vertical characters with the help of a single button. Now, trick number eight is using different filters and layer style effects to customize your text in ways that you can't easily do with just fonts and things like that. So in this case, I'm going to create some outline text using our layer styles and then create some gradient text below that we can add some filtering effects for a glowy, ghostly look. So to begin, I'll go ahead and add a stroke to this text by double clicking on the text layer to activate layer styles and then I'll go and enable the stroke setting. I'll just choose a white solid colored stroke here and you can play around with the size of that stroke as you'd like. Next, I'll go to the blending options and just set the fill opacity to 0%. So that way we only have the outline of our text and not the inner area. I'll click OK. Now I want to duplicate this text, so I'll press Command or Control J while that text layer is active and I'll drag it below the original type layer. Now, just to quickly reset this back to its default values, I'm going to double click on it, set the fill back to 100% and disable the stroke. I'll click OK. Now to add a quick gradient to this type layer, I'll go to the effects option and go to gradient to create a new gradient. And I'll just choose a bright blue gradient color like so. I'll click OK. To make sure that this only fits within the underlying type layer, I'll right click and go to create clipping mask. And now we have two layers that are filling in the background and we can apply some filters onto these layers so that it gives us a more unique effect. To apply these filters to both of these layers, I'm going to first shift click both of those layers and then right click and convert to smart object. This way I can apply my filters as smart filters and they're easy to update and also apply globally to all of the related layers. With that layer selected, I'll go up to filter, blur, and in this case, I'll go to motion blur. So this is going to add a horizontal blur in this case, but you could change the angle as you would like. I'll click OK. And next I'll go up to filter, blur, and this time at radial blur. Choose the spin blur method, and I'll just increase this a fair amount and click OK. So this will blur the text in a vertical manner. And from here, we could play around with the opacity or something like that, depending on what you're into but now you have a totally unique text effect that wouldn't be possible without the help of layer styles and some smart filters. So hopefully these tricks give you some great ideas of how you can use the type tool in Photoshop, but if you have some other ideas that I didn't discuss in this video, I'd love to hear about them in the comments below.